Hello, my name is Jonathan Broadwell. I'm an embedded systems consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, and the creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at another one of the sensors in the Elegoo uh, 37 in 1 sensor module kit. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the linear hall sensor, which you can see down here at the bottom. And for those of you who don't know, a hall sensor is essentially an IC that or a physical sensor that can detect a magnetic field. Typically, you use them like switches. Uh, you see them a lot on motor encoders, things like that. But this linear hall one is a little bit interesting because this sensor outputs an analog that's proportional to the field that it sees. So let's play with that a little bit and see what we can make happen with the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. So the circuit we've got here is pretty simple. We've got a Serial Wombat 18AB board that has a built-in linear integrator that I've added to the circuit. Uh, we're getting five volts from the Arduino and this will knock that down to 3.3 that we'll provide out to our sensor. We've got a Cduino Shao here that's acting as our Arduino board. We've got a servo that's hooked up to pin number 15 We've got this linear hall sensor. Uh, it has digital and analog outputs. For this purpose, there's a lot of digital sensors out here. We're going to ignore the digital and just use the analog. That should be more interesting. And to power the servo, we have a USB battery. And I've got this little breakout board that provides the USB battery power to the servo and breaks out the servo signal line so we can bring it back to the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Uh, I sell those boards on Amazon. They're really convenient if you like playing with the little light duty servos. So let's take a quick look at this. We've got one more component that's very important. This is a neodymium magnet and north is one side, south is the other. So let's hook this up to the Serial Wombat panel and play with that sensor a little bit. The Serial Wombat chip that we saw was connected to the Arduino via I2C. My computer obviously doesn't have an I2C bus, so we're going to need a way to get to the I2C bus. And in order to do that, under File, Examples, Serial Wombat Bridges, there's the UART to 115 to I2C. We're going to load that onto the Arduino. And essentially, that means that anything that comes over the I2C bus, any 8 byte serial wombat packet will get sent over i squared c and then whatever comes back will get sent back to the uart okay so that download was successful now we are going to launch the serial wombat panel app and you can either get this from the source code on github or in there there's also a pre-compiled windows executable i don't have a mac or a linux version of this at this time so i'm going to go to port open serial my cduino shower is on 30 so i'm going to open that up and now it's going to start talking to the Serial Wombat chip through that bridge. And it looks like that worked. And we've got uh, version 2.1.2. So next, I'm going to go to pin 19 and say I want an analog input. Because that's where my uh, sensor is. And I'll say configure and auto sample. And right off the bat, this the inputs range from 0 to 65535. And we're getting a value that's very near 32768. So it looks like this particular sensor outputs uh, the middle of the range. I've got the sensor running on 3.3 volts, not 5, which is the range of my Serial Wombat A to D converter. Let's look real quick at the what happens when we put the magnet in place. Okay, so now I've got my magnet. I'm going to put it over here by the sensor. And we see we get a significantly positive value over 40,000, uh, looks like back down to 32 if I move it away. If I turn the magnet so that the pole is in the other direction, I see a significant negative drop down to, what, about 17,000. So it looks like, take it away, put it back up in the opposite direction. And so it looks like maybe 37,000 and 25,000 we can use to detect presence or absence of the magnet. We can also do some linear proportional stuff, but given this particular sensor, the way that it's oriented, the fact that this guy kind of bends, you know, this is probably not something where we want to try to get a proportional response. I think using the analog in a way where we can differentiate no magnet north south is probably a pretty good solid application for this sensor. 
So ultimately input data is useless unless you use it for something. So let's go to pin 15 and that will be our servo. And so we will configure that servo to be just its default values. And we knew that we wanted uh, 37, what did we say before? 37,000 and 28,000 to be our thresholds. Let's go to output scaling. I'm sorry, that's not the one. Let's go to output scaling 2D lookup. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a series of points in that drive that servo to different locations. And we'll drive it to zero at one location. Anything below 28,000, we will drive the thing to zero. At 28,001, we'll drive it to 32,768. At uh, we said 37,000 was our other threshold. 32,768. And at 37,001 input, <coughs> we'll drive it to the max, which is 65,535. And up to 65,535 is an input where we will also drive it to 65,535. And so you can see we've get this, we get this transform here. Uh, if the input is in this range, we're going to output zero. If the input is in this range, which is kind of our middle zone where there's no magnet, we're going to output 32,768. If it gets past this point, we're going to output 65,535. So essentially we'll have three servo positions that feed based on that input. And so we will come over here and the input pin is our our sensor pin and so we will configure this lookup and enable the output now let's go over and actually turn the thing on and see what happens so now the servo is getting pulses from the serial wombat chip but it doesn't have power if i push the button on this usb battery now it has power and it went to its center position so let's take the magnet put it over here and it goes to one direction. I take the magnet away. It goes uh, back to the middle. Turn the magnet over and put it over there. It goes to the other position. So I can control the position of this servo with the magnet in three different locations. And we could potentially break that into maybe five different ones. Maybe we have a close and a far away for the magnet or things like that. But I think this was sufficient for this example for you guys to kind of get the idea. So. You know, none of these sensors are great. I tried playing with the digital and, you know, turn the uh, turn the knob on this pot that's supposed to make that more or less sensitive. And really, it didn't seem to work all that great. But for a dollar, you know, there's you get 37 different things in this kit. It's a pretty amazing kit. There's lots of stuff in there. And uh, for the money, you just can't beat it for the amount of fun you can have. So highly recommended. Uh, and this particular linear sensor, linear hall sensor, yeah, we can definitely do some some fun stuff with this. So I would highly recommend uh, that sensor, at least for experimentation purposes. <coughs> I would probably want to make that a little bit hard, more hardy, get rid of the digital part in the pot if I was actually going to use it for uh, some kind of serious project application. So let's go back now and turn this into an Arduino sketch that does the same thing. We're going to go to our Arduino. And we're going to go unto, under Examples, Serial Wombat, Serial Wombat Template I squared C. And this will just open up a nice convenient file that already has some configurations that are compatible with the code generator. We're going to go down here into Setup because that's where most of the auto-generated code, if not all, goes. And go back to the Serial Wombat application. And we have our analog input. We're going to say gen code on that one with this configuration. And we'll hit control V here. It copied it onto the clipboard. Now, some of these things need to be global declarations. For convenience, it puts it all on the keyboard, the clipboard together so you don't have to do multiple steps. We're going to cut, cut this out of setup and move it up to the top. And you can see there's a comment here. Put this line before setup. So we did that. Then the other thing we need to do is configure the setup for the servo. There were three things we did here. We're going to hit gen code, gen code, gen code. Come over here, put those at the end of setup. 
And again, we declared a servo here. So we're going to have to move that declaration all the way up to the top. The code generator is not awesome in terms of indents because it doesn't know what the structure of your code is going to be. So we're going to hit auto format and clean that up a little bit. And we can see it came through here. It declared the analog input, declared the servo. Uh, the template sets up your I squared C in your serial and then uh, sets up the analog on pin 19 with standard things, the servo on pin 15 with standard parameters. Uh, our XY lookup table. It created a local variable, then loaded that into the Serial Wombat chip's user buffer and enabled the lookup scaling. So at this point, we should be able to go to sketch, upload, oh, make sure that make sure that you've closed the Serial Wombat port if necessary so that the Arduino can use it. We'll go to sketch, upload. And now if we come over here, make sure that our battery's turned on, put the magnet over here. Turn it around, we get the opposite result. So we can see that we are controlling the servo uh, based on code that was loaded by the Arduino. So I hope you've, you've enjoyed this example. I hope it's helpful for you with your Elego uh, linear hall sensor and that you've seen a little bit about how you can use the Serial Wombat panel to uh, examine the function of a sensor and then also use it to automatically generate a lot of code that will get you started easily with Arduino if you're using a Serial Wombat chip as your I.O. method. Until we meet again, have fun and keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.